Um, pop quiz for everybody. Um, who thinks that the people are doing the fishing are really fishing so that El Bakian and Sci-Hub can get access to a few more scientific papers? Yeah. <laughs> They're not fishing for that stuff, right? They're not fishing for that stuff, all right? And she swims with some very, very dangerous fish. Okay? Remember the slides. Um, we've got time for some questions. I think we've got about uh, 10 minutes. I have a list of questions, but hopefully you've got some questions and we'll do our best to work our way through them. Please, uh, we have some microphones, so come on up. Yeah, pot, yeah, brilliant. Hi, Alison Balin, Duke University Press. I have a question for Rick. Um, so I work at a university, obviously, and um, I think um, we're very aware as publishers of the extremely strong organizations that exist around libraries and scholarly libraries, all of the, um, the associations, the listservs, everything like that. So you, librarians seem particularly well positioned to come at this in a coordinated way. Do you expect there to be sessions around what you're talking about? Sessions? Yeah, sessions and panels and workshops at the upcoming year's meetings and conferences? I, I would like to say yes. I hope so. Um, I do think that we're fighting against uh, a, a very strong tide of tribal, tribal feeling. Uh, the, the, the culture of... The, the culture of free access for all is very, very strong in libraries. We have a very strong, I, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. We have a very strong history of being all about giving people free access. We don't always think very critically about that. Um, and so that, that makes it really hard when somebody says, yeah, but what Sci-Hub is doing is wrong or you know, whatever. Uh, it, it, it makes it hard. I, I hope there will be. Um, I'm not as hopeful as I would like to be. And I guess the follow-up would be, um, our, at Duke, I don't believe our OIT organization would let this slip with the library. So what, what is the relationship, what do you think the relationship is between the University of OIT, security departments, and libraries and librarians approach to this? I think the problem is that this, that this is not an IT problem. This is a social engineering problem. Um, and the IT department can't stop people from giving away their network credentials. There, there's not a, a software package in the world that you can buy that's going to that's going to fix that. Uh, and and so uh, it really this is one of those things that really does come down to education and winning hearts and minds. And I'm afraid that we as librarians are not very well positioned to win hearts and minds to the idea of secure access to content because that's not in our DNA. Uh, Kent Anderson, Red Link. So two, two things. Uh, first of all, this summer you'll be seeing Red Link's rolling out something called Red Link Network, which will level the playing field on the security front. And it's free to join, so look for that. Uh, the second thing is, you know, we laughed twice or through two or three times at lawyers, but I didn't hear one person in this presentation say anything that didn't have a lawyer involved. Yeah. Okay, they're liable and they need to be sued. And they're, you know, they're coming through in, in dis, you know, areas that don't have the right kind of laws. So you know, just as you might say, librarians, you need to grow up, I think we need to grow up and start act, you know, It's kind of struck me that, I'm sorry this is turning into a statement, but Elsevier is always on the nose of this. And we aren't, don't always have, the, we don't align as an industry. And we kind of quietly let them take the hits. And I'm not, you know, a proponent of Elsevier, but I'm a proponent for us actually having a unified purpose and a unified front. And if we don't accept that lawyers are part of that and that activism is part of that and that we have to push back just as much as we're being pushed at, then I think we know how the game's going to end up. So I just wanted to mention that intrinsic to each one of these presentations, even though we laugh at lawyers and we want to tell lawyer jokes, the law matters in this. And we need to change the laws and they need to be upgraded and they need to be more unified. So. Absolutely. We've got another. Hi, yeah, Peter Berkery from AAUP. Um, I was just uh, struck by your comment that uh, uh, Ms. Albakian might be swimming with some dark fish. Yeah. I had the uh, occasion to see her beam in to the uh, open access conference last month at the University of North Texas, and it was um, 
interesting. But uh, um, I wonder if you'd care to, she strikes me as an improbable, now this is based on you know 25 minutes of Skyping, but she strikes me as an improbable individual to at least have started out swimming with those darker fish. If you're in any sort of position to elaborate on the observation, I'd be interested. So don't tweet this, and this is a strictly personal opinion. Um, you know what the phrase useful idiot means? You know what the phrase useful idiot means? Right. I think, I think you know, I, I, I personally don't think she has any criminal intent at all. I think she has a, a worldview that frankly is at odds with many of us in the room and perhaps less so with other people in the room. But I think the fact of the matter is, you know, her stuff runs out of Russia. Um, it runs on LibGen, okay? That is dangerous places to go. And the people that are doing that work, that customized, I mean, the point about that fishing thing that you saw up there, that was a customized, highly sophisticated piece of fishing. And it works, right? It works, okay? And to me, I don't find it remotely credible that the people doing that are doing it so that people can gain access to copyrighted or whatever it is. Uh, research articles at the end of the day they're doing it as, as Rick pointed out so that they can gain access to all the other juicy stuff but I think the idea of attaching to a noble cause that is inherently interesting and seductive and attractive to people that are incredibly smart in one area and perhaps not so in other areas is the thing and we collectively seem to have focused on that side of it and I think have, have missed fundamentally the point again for me personally the lesson from Sci-Hub is that our systems are fundamentally, in the round, collectively, not fit for purpose. You know, we open the door, we roll down a red carpet, we put a whacking great big neon sign at the back of the room and we said, swag here, please help yourself. Do come back. <laughs> I mean, that's literally how bad it is, isn't it? I mean, Jesus, it's the 21st century, we're still using IP. <laughs> what on earth are we doing? And, and really, that's my primal scream thing. I'm going to hug a tree later on. There's plenty of them outside. Um, <laughs> but, but for me, that's, that's the moment when you suddenly sit there and you think, oh, hang on a minute. We've got to stop. We've got to rethink all of this stuff from the fundamentals because what we're doing is, is not where we need to be. Sorry, that's the end of me. Uh, please carry on with another. Cal Hashmani, American Chemical Society. I had a question to Rick Anderson. Uh, related to the SSO, he, he, he described very well about a situation where each person has basically a master key to open other systems. So has there been a debate in university about uh, uh, moving away from SSO and so that the damage will be limited? Not that I'm aware of. Um, I, I, you know, single, single sign-on is incredibly, incredibly seductive for so many good reasons. Um, it, but I, I don't work in IT, so if there's been a debate about the ongoing appropriateness of, of SSO at my institution, I'm not aware of it. So just to jump in, our OIT team has been very active around the social engineering side of things, just kind of get the message out of being the arm for education. But one of the things that they're very much pushing with our SSO um, implementation is multi-factor authentication. Mm. And, and what that points out is, you know, it, it's maybe kind of glib of me to say this isn't an IT problem, it's a social engineering problem. There may be an IT solution to the social engineering problem that we just haven't found yet. I, I, I would love two-factor authentication. As someone provides these services, I would like to have one interoperable system that everybody can get to grips with because otherwise we'll be back where we start. We'll be back with the users going, oh, geez, yet another variant on the username and password. Um, you know, the road to hell and all that. Sorry, go ahead. We've got time for one more question, I think. Yeah, go. I'm John Tagler with the Association of American Publishers. And a couple of comments. First, Peter Berkeley mentioned the Open Access Conference in Texas about two or three weeks ago. And one of the things that concerned me about that is that was an open access conference, and yet Alexandra is about theft. In theft, there's nothing sustainable 
nothing re uh, economically re realistic in her approach. Yet she was given a forum, and again, I'm not, I'm, I'm sort of, this, this community had nothing to do with that. But I think it was, it was pretty bad on their part to allow her a forum in a, in a situation where they're talking about open access when she is clearly not sustaining anything uh, economically. And the second quick question with Rick, and I, I really enjoyed very much your article a few weeks ago on the um, threats to access. Had you considered, and I don't really know the, the workings within a university, but have you considered what are the other vulnerabilities? In other words, if you're into a medical libraries system, I and mean, once you're in, you've got some level of access. I mean, is there not threats to health records? Is there, are, are there not threats to things like grants and uh, patents and that sort of information beyond just what one's personal uh, access is? Because that seems to me a greater threat just beyond the individual users, but to the whole institution. Agreed, yeah. Thank you. And, and I'll, just, I'll just comment too on your first comment. Um, I, I think the, if the, the smartest thing that the open access community could do right now is put as much rhetorical distance between itself and, uh, and Alexandra Elbakian as, as possible. Because as you said, she's not in the open access business. She's in the copyright infringement business. And open access and copyright infringement are by no means the same thing. They, they honestly don't have much to do with each other. And by anything that somebody, anything that somebody in the open access movement does that can be perceived as putting their arms around her is, is just gonna end up hurting Herping, hurting the open access movement, I think. Well, what is part of her reception was, I wouldn't call it frigid, but it was cool. And I've heard that, to their credit, yeah. To the credit of the folks at that conference. Yeah. Actually, we, um, our, the president of AAP sent a letter to the university and to the organizers expressing our concerns that exactly what we've been discussing, it's a divide between open access and theft. And we did not ever receive any response whatsoever. Not surprisingly, but it, it was never uh, answered. Thank you. Um, so, like I say, a bunch of here ended up getting quite interested and excited and motivated to discuss this and see where we can go further. So this is an open call to any of you. Come find us whenever you are for the, the rest of the conference if you want to join this party. Um, Thank you very much to all of my speakers, to Christian, to Rick, and to Peter for giving their uh, talks. Give them a round of applause. And...